So in the last part of our talk, we uh, talked about how we offload the CPU, how we can take our UART and make it a controller so the CPU isn't dealing all the time with uh, such a protocol. It's really a slow protocol. But really, is that enough, uh, or how are we going to deal with even faster interfaces than something like UART? So just a reminder, UART has uh, a maximum rate of 150 kilobit per second. That's really slow, 0.1152 megabits per second, that's much slower than the internet or something we have at our house. And remember, we're building a router. Is uh, is that going to be sufficient? And I don't really think so. And another thing, UART's maximum range is 15 meters, and we need to really go uh, all the way across the world. So, um, you know, I think we need to go and move on to something better, like, uh, you know, a fiber optic or something. So again, this is our um, status of our, of our system right now. We have our CPU, we have our bus, we have memory, we have GPIOs, and we have have our UART, let's add something that can really help us uh, use our router. And what we're going to add is Ethernet. Ethernet was invented in 1973. Ethernet is uh, widely used for realization of local area networks. Actually, it was, it was invented as something totally different. It was a type of a bus that was supposed to have one single signal path with many um, different uh, components connected to it, and they were not synchronized. And what that means is they were not synchronized is that A and B over here could go out and transmit at the same time, and then there would be a collision. So they would have this kind of uh, sensing that when they would send something, they would also listen if somebody else was, sens it was sending something at the same time and if they realize the collision they would randomize some time and then go and uh, and uh, and transmit again so that was called CSMA CD carrier sense multiple access with collision detection but really Ethernet has been uh, changed in the way it's used and nowadays we um, use it as a point-to-point -point fully duplex so our router has you know our uh, ports over there which each port has a um, Ethernet connector that's connected between the router and another uh, hub or another type of a, a user so it's just point to point nowadays. And it's fully duplex, so we can transmit and receive um, at the same time. Um, an Ethernet packet is already, a, a, it's a more, you know, a complex communication thing. And we have lots of parts of our Ethernet packet to help it get to, you know, its destination and so forth and track it and all kinds of other things. The actual data itself, the payload, is this part over here. And it's, uh, it's variable length. So it can be 46 to 1500 um, bytes long. And that's the actual data that we're using in our, in our Ethernet packet. Um, how much throughput does Ethernet get? Well, um, we, the old type of standard that we used to see for a long time in our different types of, uh, of our network cards were what we called 10100. That was 10 megabits, which was uh, 2.5 megabits per channel. And we'd have four bits that would be um, working in parallel. Then uh, we steeped it up to 100 megabit, uh, megabits per second, which was 25 megabits per second times four bits. And um, more recently, eh, well, in the last 10 or 15 years or so, we've gone up to a uh, gigabit Ethernet, which are the standard we usually have on our different types of machines, that will be 125 megabits per second with um, eight different lines. Of course, on uh, more industrial things, you have 10 gig and uh, even higher than that. Um, so Ethernet really has grown into something that's very fast. So just let, let, let's make a side note over here because a lot of us electrical engineers somehow don't run into this in our studies. And I wanted to mention the OSI model. So the OZ model, the Open Systems Interconnection Model, defines seven network layers. And this is the classical model that shows us how we deal with communications uh, across uh, different types of systems. And at the very bottom, we have the physical layer or the phi, and that's the electrical and physical components. So, you know, uh, the actual thing that's transmitting the actual, you know, um, electron that are flying from side to side between communications and how we deal with them. So um, that's the phi. Uh, often phi's on different types of chips. They're going to be like a big analog block that's going to deal with the high-speed communication. Then we go up to the data link layer, which, uh, which takes care of reliable data transport. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer communication across a single physical layer. Um, and really, that's where Ethernet is kind of dealing with. Um, on top of that, we have our network and our transport layer. So that's like our TCP IP or something that, uh, that um, you know, Internet usually works on. So uh, the network layer is basic routing over the link. And the transport layer ensures that data is delivered in the proper order and without errors across multiple links. Um, and above that, the three top layers, session, presentation, and application, they're kind of all condensed into one nowadays. They would be the application you know, layer there, you know, what our user interface and so forth is going to to be. So really Ethernet, as we said, it's at the bottom layers. It's uh, talking about the data link layer mainly and the phi that um, uh, connects to the, the IO ports.
So I'm um, looking at Ethernet again. It was originally this thing that had one single bus. It was non-synchronized and you had to deal with collisions. But nowadays, really, it's a point-to-point -point type of a thing that goes through some sort of router if it's wireless or wired or something else. And um, if we have two, uh, two endpoints that are communicating with each other through the whole OZ model, so a, a router is going to be you know, kind of a bridge that's going to be taking communication from one side and linking it to the other side in order um, to send really something from my uh, internet browser or whatever uh, to somebody else's internet browser or something like that. So um, that's what uh, our Ethernet's going to be. And Ethernet has this um, long type of a, uh, of, a, of a package. And inside the package, the most important thing is the data over here. This is going to be um, between like 46 and 1500 bytes. And as Bud Lightyear says, Ethernet ports, Ethernet ports are everywhere because really Ethernet has taken over the world as the standard for most of these types of communication. It's way uh, gone past this original, you know, single non-synchronized type of thing to uh, really being used in, in our everyday life all the time and being the backbone of the Internet. So let's uh, see if we take a si simple on-chip interface, APB, that we saw uh, during the last lecture, and we'll see if it's uh, sufficient to uh, be used for Ethernet. So just to remind you what APB is, it's a 32-bit bus, and it takes a two-phase access. So in the first phase, which we call setup, we're going to put our you know, address and data and select our slave. And on the second phase, which we call the access phase, we're going to actually do the read or write operation. So it takes two accesses to... Um, to do uh, one, uh, you know, one operation to send one 32-bit uh, transmission or uh, receive a 32-bit transmission, and then the next uh, after those two cycles, we can go in onto the next, um, you know, transmission. So is APB sufficient? And let's go and calculate that again. So let's say we're taking a gigabit Ethernet. So we have uh, 10 to the 9, you know, 1 gigabit per second uh, we want to transfer on this bus. So that's what was received um, at the end. And we want to transfer this over through the bus to the CPU. OK, so our transfer width is uh, 32 bits on our, on our APB. And we, it takes us two cycles for one transfer. So essentially, we're actually getting 16 bits per transfer um, uh, in practice. Uh, with our 100 megahertz uh, clock, what that means is that our throughput is going to be 100 megahertz you know, times uh, 16. We're going to get 1.6 um, gigabits per second. And is that good? Well, it's higher than 10.9, you know, 1.6 times 10.9. So it seems that our APB is sufficient to transfer over our, you know, gigabit Ethernet all the way to our CPU. But don't forget, we said that Ethernet is full duplex. So actually, the throughput is, you know, 2 gigabit per second. And so our APB is not sufficient in any way. We really don't want to take up the entire, entire uh, bandwidth of our APB and be working on the limits. So really, APB is not sufficient to deal with Ethernet. How can we deal with that? We can take our transfer width and make it bigger, um, transfer more than 32 bits on one transfer. And we can also reduce this APB rate, uh, make it smaller than two, so we can get our uh, real, uh, our full transfer width in each cycle. So um, we already showed the kind of solution to that, and that's a higher performance bus, and that was uh, AHB. So we used wider buses. We can take, for example, a 64-bit bus. Um, and the other thing is we can pipeline the address and the access phases, and that will give us double the throughput. So we see here that while we um, do the addressing phase uh, and then the access phase on the next cycle, um, while we're doing the access phase, we can already pipeline and overlap the next addressing phase. So we'll already get it on the next cycle, and we get a, um, a, a full, you know, uh, one cycle per transmission type of throughput. It also supports bursts, which, which can also uh, uh, really uh, do things much better and faster. So we took our whole thing and we added AHB here in the middle instead of uh, our APB. And, uh, and we have our Ethernet controller that's going to be dealing with all the transmission. And now it's going to be sending it through the AHB to the CPU. And we want to ask, is APB enough? And so we'll go back to our little math uh, pad over here. And now we just remember that our Ethernet rate is 2 gigabits per second. Our AHB transfer width, we boosted up to a whopping 64 bits. And our rate is one cycle per transfer, which we got through pipelining. With our 100 megahertz clock, da -da 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 we get a 6.4 gigabit per second throughput. And that is plenty sufficient to deal with our 2 gigabit Ethernet rate. Is it? Well, we forgot to ask an important question. What about the CPU?